Friday night soccer on the Cougars Network. Tonight is District 26 5A play as Cade looks to inch closer to securing a playoff spot as the Cougars host district leading Piper from Cougar Stadium. Glad to have you with us on this 73 degree night from New Braunfels in this matchup between the Warriors and the Cougars. Let's talk more about these two programs. Canyon comes in a record of 9-7-2, and, and right now riding a five-match unbeaten streak. Good turnaround for Canyon. After the Cougars dropped three of their first five district matches, they have since gone 4-0-1. and Their head coach, Rob Rosh, at his 26th season at Canyon, more than 350 wins as Cougars head coach. And the last time his Cougars lost a match, Nearly a month ago on February 10th against longtime Comal ISD rival Smithson Valley. During this five match winning streak, the Cougars have outscored their opponents 18 to 4. Coming off a draw, though, against Bernie Champion on Tuesday, a 2 2 final against the Chargers. And at this match tonight, looking for payback of an earlier 4 0 loss to Piper about a month ago. And this match is underway. The Cougars are in the black kits and Piper the visitors in white here tonight from Cougar Stadium. Let's talk more about these Warriors as well. A remarkable first varsity season for Piper. 17 wins already and the last unbeaten team remaining in District 26 5A. The only two losses the Warriors have suffered January 14th against Harlandale and January 5th against El Paso Franklin, that has been it. And this team has had an incredible knack of scoring, 75 goals scored for the Warriors in their 22 matches, three players with 10 goals or more. And like the Cougars, the Warriors also played on Tuesday, beating Veterans Memorial six to one. And tonight they're looking to extend their unbeaten streak to 13 straight tonight. Some of the players to watch in this match tonight in goal this evening for Canyon. We're going to see him in the blue kit as Nico Sellers had eight saves against the Chargers on Tuesday. He'll be in net for Canyon. Opposite him, Joaquin Sanchez in goal for the Warriors. He's in pink, one of the captains on this Piper team. And we'll talk more about some of the key attackers as things move along. Again, Piper and White, they are attacking the goal to our right tonight. Canyon in the all black, they attack the goal to our left. Warriors now in the attacking third. Ball cleared just outside the 18. Warriors staying aggressive though, put the ball into the 18. Knocked away by Canyon, good clear out by Christian Hockley. But a takeaway for the Warriors. A pass into the 18, shot coming and too strong off the foot of Jackson Schaefer. Talked about some of the go-to scores on these two teams. Schaefer certainly fits that mold for Piper. 37 points scored this year, and he is a top goal scorer. 18 for the Warriors with a couple of hat tricks, both coming in district play. Canyon's top goal scorer as we have a player go down just outside the 18 for Piper. Top goal scorer for the Cougars, Cameron Griffin. Six goals on the year, scored both in the game against Bernie Champion on Tuesday. First quarter of the match coming up for Piper. Handling the duties here, Jeremy Sanchez. And an early scoring chance for the Warriors. Kind of a dribbler, didn't send that one into the six. And Piper stays in the attacking third. Few minutes in, no score, nil-nil. Piper and Canyon. Again, the Warriors won the first matchup 4-0 back at Piper High School last month. Good takeaway by Canyon's back line. A good touch from Andrew Grebon. Now here come the Cougars into the attacking third. Jeremy Perales 
up along the far side with a pass a little bit out of the reach of a teammate's. And this will lead to a goal kick here for Piper. Overall record on the year for the Cougars, 9-7-2. and seven and two. Here at home, 3-4. and four. But the important record is that district mark in 26-5A, 6-3-1. All alone currently in fourth place. Pass up along the near side. Here's Baden Arrieta. Looking for an alley. Arietta got shielded off by the Warrior defender, but this will lead to a corner for Canyon. This one, their first of the night. Comes about five minutes in. Playing the long game, a header attempt, doesn't go. And that's last deflected by Cade Polson. And one of the Cougar attackers, that was Arietta, a bit slow to get up. Able to recover. And the goal kick coming now from Joaquin Sanchez. Piper, 22 matches played, 17 wins. They've only lost twice, three draws. Last defeat coming January 14th, almost two months ago. Some pressure here, Arietta the attacker out in front, but two defenders bracketing him. And no scoring chance there for Canyon. Again, the Warriors have scored 75 goals this year. An average of close to four goals a match. They've put up four or more seven times to include four in the win over Canyon in the first meeting. They've put up as many as nine goals this year. Here's Arietta, distinctive pink cleats. Two Warrior defenders hone in. And this is going to stay in play. Does not lead to a Cougar throw in. A battle for Canyon coming back away with it. Here's Polson for the Cougars. Cleared out by the Warriors. So your parks there on defense for Piper. A lot of defenders back for Piper. Ball living right now on this side of the field. But no shot on that trip for Canyon. That comes Piper. Attacker out in front, may have been tripped up a little bit. That was last touch by the Warriors, a throw in for the Cougars. Up along the far side for Canyon. Here comes Jimmy Perales. Whistle blows. And this will lead to a free kick. Aggressive takedown there by Piper. David has gone by first half, still no score. Each team is at a corner. The goalies have not really been pressured yet. Maybe a chance for the Cougars to apply pressure here. Deep in the attacking third, Christian Hockley. And the ball knocked away. And the Cougars will set up their second corner of the night. Here's Hector Morales. The senior midfielder on the corner. Kind of a line drive, touched by Logan Gage. Punched up into the air. Corrales, the shot got deflected. 
And here come the Warriors. Only attacker out in front for Piper was Nick Mangan. Or actually, that was Eric Ong. Passed out of his reach. And here come the Cougars. A Friday night in high school athletics, therefore a very busy one around Canyon Athletics. Girls soccer enjoying a great season. They're playing Piper on the road tonight. The Cougarettes 14-4, their record, 8-2 in district. They won five straight. A streak for Canyon that started with a 10-0 win over Seguin. So it's playing some really good soccer down the regular season stretch. They're back home on Tuesday hosting Smithson Valley. Cougars trying to work this into the attacking third. There's a pass, here's a shot deflected. Well, the Warriors avert disaster there. Cougars a great scoring chance with the goalie falling down on the first save. One of the defenders back cleared the ball. And now the Cougars will set up their third corner of the half. Here it was again. And now the corner for Canyon. Into a lot of traffic. No shot for the Cougars on that trip. More than 10 minutes gone by. No score between the Cougars and the Warriors. Second ever meeting in this Piper's first ever varsity season. Canyon trying to prevent a corner here. Really solid defense from Logan Gage. Sophomores had a really good year for the Cougars. Canyon's second leading goal scorer. And third in total points. And a good defensive play there. Denying the Warriors of a corner. As we hit 29 minutes to go in the first half. Talking more about this busy Friday in Canyon Athletics. Season is young in softball, but the Cougarettes out to a 4-0 start. They're hosting Kerrville Tybee tonight. You can see the lights on in the softball field off in the distance. Baseball as well. Canyon coming off a 6-5 win over longtime rival New Brothels on Tuesday. They'll play the Piper Warriors in softball in a couple of weeks. There's a good pass out in front. Arietta got tripped up in the 18, and the whistle blows. Red card is administered. This will go against Piper, and a huge scoring chance here now for the Cougars. It's a red card charged to Canyon. I think it's car charged to Canyon. So this red card was given to the Cougars, not the Warriors. Now across the way, one of the Cougars, that's Arietta, slow to get up. And right now, the head official visiting with head coach Rob Rush. Explaining the call. Canyon thought the call was going to go against Piper. And that would have led to a PK with the penalty occurring inside the 18. Would have been a golden scoring opportunity for the Cougars. Instead, the call going against Canyon. Talked about Rob Rush, 26 season now, again at Canyon High School. A coach inducted into the Tasco Hall of Honor, Texas Association of Soccer Coaches. He's guided this program to the postseason 21 times, 
in his first 25 years. Right now, the game clock is frozen. 28 minutes, four seconds officially to go in the first half. Officials are still talking here at midfield. Again, a red card was administered, and it looked like against Canyon. Because the foul occurred in the 18. If that's a red card against Piper, that's a PK for the Cougars. But they're not setting that up right now. And the ball is resting about seven yards outside the 18-yard box for Piper. They're ready for a free kick here and to resume play. And they're trying to get the call sorted out. Canning coach is still talking across the way. Give one of the officials visiting with the Cougars in midfield, the other official, the lead, coming to visit with Rob Rush again. Again, no score. About 12 minutes have gone by. And they're trying to sort out what just happened here. The red card was awarded to Canyon. The Cougars thought it should have been against Piper because the Cougar attacker, the 18, got tripped up. With the scoring chance, should have led to a PK. The call going against Canyon. And Rob Rush looking for an explanation here. Critical late season match, you have Piper trying to get closer to a district championship. The Cougars trying to make sure they're headed to the postseason. Canyon currently holding on to the number four spot in the point standings. A three point lead over fifth place Kerrville Tybee. And discuss Piper's goal of a district title. Currently a two point lead over Smithson Valley, the Rangers 8-2-0, just two points back. In third place in district, you have Bernie Champion, the three points back of Piper, the Chargers 7-1-2 in the district. And a very top-heavy 26-5A. Those five teams all in the playoff hunt, championship hunt. Piper, Swiss and Valley, the Cougars, Bernie Champion, Kerrville Tyvee. The bottom three have really struggled. Veterans Memorial, Wagner, Seguin are a combined 226 and 2 in district. And play resumes. Call stands, call going against Canyon. No PK for the Cougars and a red card against Canyon as well. Lights on here at Cougar Stadium. Sunset about an hour ago. Just saw the JV game go final between these two before varsity lined things up. Lights are also on at the baseball stadium. Canyon Baseball out to a 4 2 and 1 start. Put up 18 runs and a win on Tuesday. Here come the Warriors, looking to get it up ahead on. Very good offensive threat. Canyon's got defenders back. And a clear out from Anthony Ordonez. Three very prolific goal scorers on this Piper team. Again, three players with 10 goals or more on the year. 
Long is one of them. 11 goals on the year. Two big goals and a win over Smithson Valley. Owen Harris, 15 goals scored, and Jackson Schaefer, 18. So the numbers to watch for Piper, Ong is 9, Harris 13, Schaefer 15. Harris also one of the three team captains for the Warriors. Along with Bennett Schramm and the keeper Joaquin Sanchez. Four team it is in, no score. Piper looking to push it into the attacking third. But again, a clear out from Ordonez. Player goes down for the Warriors. Call against Canyon. Free kick now for Piper. Three Warriors make it four, waiting in the 18. Pass comes that way. Just in front of the six, cleared out by Ardonez. Piper works it back just outside the 18, and his shot goes over the bar. A goal kick coming up for Canyon. After scoring threat there from Piper. I believe that was Bennett Strom, one of those captains on the shot. Here's Schramm again, looking for Ong to his right, pass off line. Ong tracks it down, well defended by Canyon, good takeaway from Grebon. But now the Warriors are throwing in the attacking third, quick toss in. Here's Ong, two Cougars around him. Good footwork from Ong. But the last touch and another goal kick here for the Cougars. Canyon again at home tonight. Just three matches left in the regular season. Just one more remaining at home. Next Friday against Seguin. Team the Cougars already beat earlier in the year 4-0. Other two matches for the Cougars on the road at Swiss and Valley and at Wagner. Whistle here goes against Piper. That'll lead to a Canyon free kick. A little more than 15 minutes gone by, still no score. A couple of shots so far for Piper. Cougars have had some chances as well. They've set up three corners so far here in this first half. Good long pass. But off the head of Perales. So Canyon unable to set up any offensive threat. Ball living around midfield. Piper, good takeaway. Pass out towards center, but taken away by a Cougar defender back. That was Christian Hockley. And they're going to give it back to the keeper, Nico Sellers. Been a busy man in goal this year for Rob Rush. Sellers, a senior. Over 130 saves on the year. Save percentage of 86%. And verbally committed earlier in the week to play at Division III Texas Lutheran out in Seguin. Did struggle against Piper. Warriors scored four goals against Sellers in the first matchup. And this is going the other way. Under 22 minutes to go in the first half. Still no score. Between two good goal scoring teams again, Canyon during this five match unbeaten streak, 18 goals scored. 
two in Tuesday's draw as Bernie Champion. And a Piper team that has put up 75 past opposing keepers in their first 22 matches. Two players collide, the whistle blows. This is going against Piper. That was just outside the 18. So not quite a PK. And here so you see the collision here. Body to body. And this free kick coming just off the edge of the 18 yard box. Here's Ordonez. That goes over the bar. And the ball goes back to Piper. 20 minutes and change to go. First half. Still no score between these two. Talked about some of the offensive numbers. Defensively, Canyon has posted six shutouts on the year. And just four goals allowed over the past five matches, all in district play. The Warriors have given up 20 goals all year. Eight shutouts of their own, three of those in 26 5A matches. Good takeaway from Canyon at midfield. Perales around three Warriors has it taken away. Actually, that was Hockley, not Perales. Here comes Piper centering pass. Deflected by Hockley. A free kick for the Cougars. Hockley, a senior on this Canyon team. Put up a goal in last week's six nil win over Veterans Memorial. The free kick though handled by Ordonez. It's deflected by Grebon. Here comes Piper. Off the Schaefer throw in. Warriors work in the middle of the field. Now up along the near side, but that pass is off target for Sawyer Parks. Discuss the upcoming schedule for Canyon for the Warriors. They'll play their final two home matches next week against Bernie Champion on Tuesday. A game that could have district title implica implications and Kurgle Tyvee on Friday. The Warriors in the regular season on the road, March 14th at Smithson Valley. And that game could decide the 26 5A champion. Under 18 minutes to go in the first half. Deflection works in Piper's favor. Could be a shot coming here. Canyon got back defensively. Good battle for the ball. Piper in the 18. Attacker got spun around. And the Cougars come away with it. Here comes Canyon. Julian Aguirre looking for Alejandro Garcia. Warriors get it back. Here's Jake Thatcher. Good clear out from Canyon. Punched away by the Cougar defenders on the back row. And then the keeper for the Warriors coming well outside of the 18. Joaquin Sanchez. After his clear out, here comes Piper. 
Looking to apply more pressure to the Canyon keeper, Nico Sellers. Two good shots so far from Piper. Canyon though low to the 18 with defenders. There's a takeaway midfield for the Warriors. A couple of strikers here. Could be a shot coming, but a good defensive play. Canyon's defense got back. That was Rodonez. It does lead to a corner here for the Warriors. And this is Cody Smith. Sophomore tied for the team lead with seven assists. Second corner tonight for the Warriors. A right-footed dribbler. Good deflection. That shot punched up into the air off the left foot of Jack Thatcher. Scoring chance goes awry there for the Warriors. Thatcher, a sophomore, couldn't score there, but did put in his third goal of the year in Tuesday's win over Veterans Memorial. We've gone beyond 25 minutes in the first half, no score. The keeper again, Sanchez, outside of the box. Clears it away. Good takeaway here from Canyon. Owen Painter on the play. Warriors, they'll get it right back. Again, the big call in this one was when Canyon's attacker Baden Arrieta was in the 18, got knocked down, was looking for a PK call, but was instead given a red card. There was a long delay as the officials sorted things out, talked to both coaching staffs. The call stood, no PK for Canyon, and the red card again to Arrieta. Gone through the credentials of Rob Rush, Canyon's longtime head coach. Corwin Rich is the head coach at Piper in his first, or in the first full varsity season for the Warriors. Before taking over at Piper, Corwin Rich was the head coach for the women's program at St. Mary's in San Antonio, a Division II program for nearly two decades. Throw in for the Cougars. In the attacking third, inside the 18. Piper defense back, and a grab of the jersey will be called here against Canyon, call going against Cade Polson. As you see, two players stumble in midfield. Won 159 games to St. Mary's, by far the most in that program's history. Former Conference Coach of the Year in the Heartland Conference. Got in that Rattlers program. A St. Mary's alum played for the Rattlers men's team. All that time around collegiate soccer, but has coached boys high school soccer before at uh, Southwest High School in San Antonio. Twelve minutes remaining in the first half. The keepers have not been challenged too much. We have seen some corner kicks and some shots. 
Keeper's not tasked with too much though. Joaquin Sanchez, I believe, has one save in the match. Nico Sellers has seen a couple of shots, but both go over the bar. And now a free kick here for the Cougars. With 11 minutes, 15 seconds to go. Warriors trying to clear it. Here comes Piper. Working it back towards center. Now action along the far side. Centering pass, Jeremy Sanchez. Attacker there, stumbled a bit. Raulio Bacetta. Here's Parks. Now Owen Harris. Harris had a beat on the defender. Corner coming up here for the Warriors. Good physical play right there from Canyon's Andrew Grebon. And each team now making some substitutions with under 10 minutes to go in the first half. Warriors setting up their third corner. Here's Harris. Out in front of the six. No shot on the corner. That shot goes right into the gut of the Canyon keeper, Nico Sellers. And we remain tied nil-nil. Sellers, six shutout wins on the year. 130 saves, has only given up 23 goals, but again, four of those to Piper. And here come the Warriors the other way, but getting back defensively for Canyon, Ian Goodwin. Pass deflected off of Canyon. Last touch by Ordonez. And another corner now for Piper. Cody Smith doing the honors for a second time. Looking for a header, no shot comes. Warriors staying aggressive. Trying to keep the ball in the attacking third with eight minutes to go. Good takeaway from Canyon. Good Cougar defense. Pass up ahead, Perales. Can't beat the keeper to it. Sanchez got back. And a throw in for the Cougars. In the scoreless first half. A Warriors team that has not lost on the road this year. 8-0-2 away from Piper. Both the ties coming up in district play. Cougar Tacker got tangled up. Logan Gage with one of the Warriors. We play on. Gage gets it back, finds Perales squeezing through Warriors. Looking for a passing lane, Perales goes down, and the whistle blows. They're going to get this against Leighton Lopez. And Perales slow to get up. Been very physical tonight. Another free kick for the Cougars just outside the 18. 
Anthony Ordonez. Musa blows. Ordonez into the 18. Attackers there. No angle for shot, though, for Hector Morales. And a goal kick here for Joaquin Sanchez. Morales has been a good, good goal scorer with the Cougars this year. Good on offense, anyway. Four assists, couple of goals scored. One of those did come. And the win over Veterans Memorial last week. His other goal was the game winner against Leander a couple of months ago. Just have the call here go against Jeremy Sanchez of Piper. He has to come off. Another Canyon free kick. Anthony Ordonez high in the air into a lot of traffic. Ball bounces around and Canyon scores. Cougars on top, 1-0. Joaquin Sanchez could not secure it on the deflection, and the Cougars capitalize. I believe it was Christian Hockley that put it in for Canyon, and it is 1-0, Cougars on top. Goal comes in the 35th minute for Hockley, his third goal of the year. One of 11 Cougars who have scored two or more goals this season, and Canyon has struck first here against Piper. They were shut out by the Warriors in the first matchup last month. A lot of bodies going down. Jimmy Perales for the Cougars got Locked up with Jackson Schaefer. When the officials are not happy right now trying to manage the emotions of the game. Owen Harris to the Warriors talking with one of the officials who was very animated to talking to Harris. Again, it's been very physical tonight. Two teams that don't have much history against one another is again, this is Piper's first varsity season. And you can see things intensifying here pretty quickly. Off the free kick. Right there in position for the Cougars. The Sellers keeps this 1-0 Canyon on top. Goal from Christian Hockley moments ago. And now the Cougars over the final four minutes of this half trying to keep it, trying to keep the Warriors off the scoreboard. Another conversation here with the official and Rob Rush. We've had a couple of stoppages now in the game. These conversations to commence. Canyon program right now sitting on nine wins, coming off a 15-win campaign from a year ago. 
five straight winning seasons for the Cougars. They're currently two games over 500 right now. They've had some deep playoff runs under Coach Rush, including a trip to the region finals back in 2008. Currently holding on to the fourth spot in a top 26 5A district. A slim three point lead over Kerrville Tybee. The win tonight would go a long way to getting back into the postseason. It would be the 22nd time ever under longtime head coach Rob Rush. Final three minutes, first half. Morales spinning, looking left, defender tripped up, Morales into the 18, with a second defender coming over to help on the takeaway. And the Warriors will throw in two and a half to go in the first half. And the St. Canyon keep this offense off the scoreboard. Remember, Piper scored four times in the first meeting. And there the keeper Sellers taking his time before picking it up. In front of Jackson Schaefer. Haven't really called Schaefer's name a lot tonight. He did not score in the win over Canyon last month. But he has scored in four straight. There's a clear trip. Jack Breidenbaugh. Tripped up Logan Gage. This game remains to be very physical. Rodonia is ready for the free kick. This will lead to a canyon corner. That's the last touch by Piper. Hector Morales will do the honors. Cougars looking for a late half scoring chance here, looking to build upon a 1 0 lead. Morales near the six. Header goes left. Off target there for the Cougars. I believe that deflected off of Andrew Grebon. Now there's under a minute to go. Final 30 seconds. Schaefer. Was the attacker out there for the Warriors? He last touched it though, and the Cougars to throw in. They'll take their time. Final 10 seconds to kick off the first half clock. And a goal from Christian Hockley in the 35th minute has given the Cougars a 1 0 lead over district leading Piper here from Cougar Stadium. Again, at the half, Canyon on top of the Warriors, 1 0. You're watching high school soccer on the Cougars Network. We're back after this. competition there was a lot of first of all getting the robot ready because we can't go unless we actually have something to compete with at first we sketch all our ideas out and we go around the room and look at everybody's ideas and out of those we select a few that we want and we start to prototype those so we're given a kit of consumables and non-consumables that we're allowed to use to build the robot and we can't use anything that's not inside that list 
I did programming for a little bit and we used Natural Language 2.0 and we used Robot C to program our robot. So I built the practice field so that we could run ideas for how we could get more points. So I was a driver for a robotics team and when I was driving the robot, I felt like I was excited but I was also nervous at the same time because I didn't want to mess up. I didn't want to be the one who caused our team to lose. But afterwards, I, I was proud of myself. I did not work on the robot this year. I worked on the process engineering notebook. The process engineering notebook is worth 30 out of 100 points in our total points. And basically we put everything in there that we do throughout. So we have a safety section, we put all of our designs in there, and our codes, stuff like that. So going into uh, San Antonio Best with the robot that we had finished the day prior to going, um, it was nerve wracking to say the least. But after we got past the first round, and then the second round and the third round, we started making friends with other schools. We started cheering on other campuses. It was. A very chaotic but a lot of fun. I feel like I learned a lot more about engineering and like ingenuity, coming up with different strategies, trial and error, um, and just working as a team all together. We learned so much about this competition that when we get to state, we know what we need to do and we know what we need to bring to be prepared for. So, where are we eating? With GBTC's blazing fast fiber speeds. Three and a half stars, not a chance we try anything under four. You might feel like other things in life are taking a little longer than before. We may not be able to speed up your dinner decisions, but we can provide fast and consistent premium Wi-Fi to search all the available options. Enjoy the GBTC difference. GBTC, connecting you. The GVTC Foundation is the philanthropic arm of GVTC Communications, dedicated to building stronger communities and supporting 501c3 nonprofits throughout our service area. We're local, people oriented, impactful, and most importantly, we care. We are enacting positive change by partnering with over 120 local nonprofits focused on our five key areas of giving health and human services, youth programs and services volunteer emergency services, education, and cultural programs. We are at your house and we are about to deliver your turkey. The foundation is 100% operated by employee volunteers with support and contributions coming from GVTC, GVTC directors and employees, and individual donors. Things that set the GVTC foundation apart from most 96 cents of every dollar donated is distributed to the community. 80% of employees donate through payroll deductions. 100% GVTC Board of Directors contribute. Over 11% of GVTC customers participate in the Roundup for Change program. And employees contributed over 23,000 hours in community service. Your time and dollars make a huge impact on our community. Please consider the GVTC Foundation if you are looking to make an end of year contribution. Your contribution will be matched by GVTC Communications. Join our mission to enhance the quality of life in the communities we serve. Hello. In this video, we'll walk you through how to set up and mount your Arlo wire-free camera in just a few simple steps. Let's get started. To begin, Open the Arlo app and make sure you're connected to your home network. From the Arlo app, select Add Device, Cameras, and then Arlo Essential. If you don't already have the free app, you can download it from the App Store and create an account. The Arlo app will help you complete setup and guide you through the installation process. Now, follow the prompts in the app to connect to a 2.4 GHz network and enter your Wi-Fi credentials. If you don't have a 2.4 GHz network, you will need to create one or contact your network administrator to enable it. Next, 
Press and hold the round white sync button on the bottom of the Arlo camera for one to two seconds. The LED light on the front of the camera will start to flash blue. Hold your camera approximately four to six inches away from the QR code displayed in the app. You will hear a chime from the camera once the QR code has been successfully scanned. The camera will automatically be found on the Arlo app. Give your camera a unique name to help identify it later. If your camera is not found, repeat the sync steps again until the blue light is flashing. Once your camera is set up, it will automatically look for updates. This can take a few minutes. If you have multiple cameras, you will repeat the setup steps for each unit. Find a location to mount your camera outside your home or business with a clear vantage point. You'll also want to ensure that the location you select has a strong Wi-Fi signal for the best experience. Check the signal strength here. A strong signal is indicated with the color bar reaching green on the far right. After you've found the ideal location, you'll want to install the mount. Next, attach your camera to the mount. Tighten the back of the mount to ensure a tight fit. You can adjust the angle by turning the thumb screw counterclockwise. Once you've positioned your camera to the desired angle, turn the thumb screw clockwise to lock the position in place. When your camera is mounted, select Continue and the app will prompt you to set up a free trial of Arlo Smart. The Arlo app will guide you through the easy setup of your included Smart trial. Arlo Smart is a subscription-based service you can add to your Arlo cameras that provides cloud recording with 30-day video history, package detection, cloud activity zones, and more. The Arlo Privacy Pledge ensures your personal data and videos remain secure, private, and in your control. Congratulations, your setup is now complete. We hope you enjoy your new Arlo Essential camera. So, where are we eating? With GBTC's blazing fast fiber speeds. Three and a half stars, not a chance we try anything under four. You might feel like other things in life are taking a little longer than before. Ooh, what sounds better, La Fiesta or Dumpling Palace? Ooh, uh, Dumpling Palace. Ew, gross. We may not be able to speed up your dinner decisions, can provide fast and consistent premium Wi-Fi to search all the available options. Enjoy the GVTC difference, and please be patient with things that may have seemed to... Wait, what are we gonna watch? Slow down a bit. <laughs> GVTC, connecting you. I'm a pretty calm, cool, and collective guy, but... Sorry, what's your name? Yeah, Evan. Hi, Evan. Yeah, we have no internet. Nothing. I don't know. It just stopped working. The internet is down. I know, I'm on the phone with them. No, that was my wife. I can't get online again. Yeah, I'm just telling... I'm talking to Evan. He's no, my that. daughter, my wife. Okay, can you guys not talk... Sorry. Yes, we have white... Yes, the white boxes. I see one. They got horns on them. The one with they the have horns. horns. Like, yes, I see one. We have 11 of those. I was on the phone and I got disconnected. Okay, it's not about you. We switched our broadband service provider. Like, he put... Devin put in 11, Evan. How are we supposed to know which one's 7 and which I thought one? it was Devin. Who's Devin? I got no service. Honey, you're blocking. You can't stand there. You're blocking it. Don't block it. And the best part... I never have to speak to Evan or Devin ever again. I think this one's 11. 11? We're not looking for 11. No, we're looking for... Are we looking for 7, Evan, or 11? We have two next to each other. That's bad. Two white boxes. Hey, buddy. Got your glove? Yep, I got it right here. You're coming, right? Of course. I'll see you in 10 minutes. Awesome. Don't forget the you-know-whats. Whether you're gearing up for a big project or a big game, GVTC has everything you need to stay connected. What do you think? They are going to love these. From smart security and high-speed internet to TV and phone, GVTC provides cutting-edge technology for your home and business. Thank you. You made it. Hey, what is it? Whoa, Jersey! Yes. With deep roots in the community, we're committed to building a stronger, better, connected future for the areas we serve.
JVTC Foundation's charitable support and industry-leading products help you stay connected to what matters most. JVTC, connecting you. And back out at Cougar Stadium, impressive first half for Canyon as they hold a 1-0 lead right for the start of the second half. Only goal scored by Christian Hockley in the 35th minute. And Canyon defensively holding this prolific Warriors offense scoreless in the first half. Again, Canyon trying to give some payback to the Warriors as Piper beats Canyon. 4-0 back at Piper High School last month. The Cougars also playing very good after a uh, tough district start. Dropped three of the first five, but has since gone unbeaten in their last five matches. A streak that has saw them win four times. And so again, a team picking up some steam as we approach the final stretch of the regular season. And on top, 1-0 over district leading Piper. So we switch sides as well. We'll see the Warriors in the white jerseys attack the goal to our left against Canyon Keeper, who's played well tonight, Nico Sellers. And the Cougars in the black jerseys attack the goal to our right against Joaquin Sanchez. Warriors again, very good season, 17, two and three the record. They have not lost a match. In nearly two months, last loss came January the 14th. And in district, the only unbeaten remaining, 8-0-2. Cougars come in, record 9-7-2. And in fourth place in 26-5A, the second half is underway. Again, the first half shutout for Nico Sellers. After allowing four goals to Piper in the first match. Big moment for him early in the week, verbally committing to Texas Lutheran. Baden Arietta, who was called for the red card in the first half and kind of a controversial sequence. Action here in the 18, cleared out by Canyon for the time being. Well, Arietta also verbally committed last week to Our Lady of the Lake, a Division III program out in San Antonio. Free kick for the Cougars. With a minute gone by in the second half. First varsity season for Piper. The first match in program history for the Warriors ended in a 1-1 draw against San Antonio Stevens back in late December. Here come the Warriors now in the attacking third in the 18. This is one of their top go-to goal scorers, Jackson Schaefer, able to work it back outside the 18. Cody Smith got tripped up. And the call against Canyon just outside the 18. So no PK here for the Warriors. But that is as close as you can get on that call without getting a PK. Here's Owen Harris who handled the free kick. Line drive right over the goal. So that scoring chance goes awry for the Warriors. The first win in Piper history came in the Warriors' second ever match. A win on the road over Davenport, three to one. Got the first home win in team history, January 17th at East Central, against East Central. That after playing a couple of non-district tournaments hosted by Alamo Heights and Judson. Boy, there he had the attacker for Piper. Jackson Schaefer. Just blazing into the 18-yard box, but the 
Cougar keeper again, Nico Sellers, beat him to the ball. So no shot there for the Warriors. That January 14th loss to Harlandale, also the last time Piper was shut out. A 1-0 loss at the time to Harlandale. Early stages, second half. Cougars have yet to really get on the attack since halftime ended. Now maybe a chance here to attack. Gage for Canyon trying to get there. Piper back defensively. Gage still wrestling for control. And the Gage got tripped up just outside the 18. Here comes Piper up along the near side. And this will lead to a throw in for the Warriors. Or no, last touch by Piper, a throw in for Canyon. Nearly five minutes gone by in the second half. team without any seniors, by the way. 12 juniors, 11 sophomores on this roster for head coach Corn Rich. Canyon, conversely, eight seniors, seven juniors, two sophomores, holding a 1-0 lead. Here's Schaefer. Ball got poked away by Ordonez, back towards center. Pass into the 18. Attacker, on shot, and a save. A sliding save made by Nico Sellers. Denies the Warriors, and we are still at a 1-0 Canyon advantage. Ball here just now, and again, you have bodies colliding. Jimmy Perales to the Cougars in a collision with one of the Warriors. And this will lead to a free kick for Canyon. Whistle blows, here's the free kick. Joaquin Sanchez. Works up ahead to Schaefer. Just saw a shot on goal for the Warriors on the last trip down, looking for another here. Not gonna come. With 33 minutes and change to go in the second half. Still 1-0, Cougars on top. Only goal scored by Christian Hockley in the 35th minute in the first half. Hockley right now trying to get the ball back, finally does. And this whistle is going against Piper. Attacker for the Warriors, Jack Thatcher, arguing his case. But to no avail. Both teams have been in their share of tight matches this year. Canyon. Has played in six games, decided by one goal. They won four of them. Right, and Hockley closed to another goal opportunity there. Just knocked away by Piper, but the Cougars will get their first quarter of the half on that play. The 
corner from Hector Morales. Morales gets it back. Morales weaving into the 18. Multiple Warrior defenders back. So no shot, no pass there. No cross. Canyon. Ordonez throws in. And another corner coming up here for the Cougars. And they'll leave it to Perales. Well, actually, he walks off. And it's Hector Morales. Handling the corner again. Worked it towards center. Punched out by the Warriors. Piper's got some attackers out in front. Trying to get it to Schaefer, but got shielded off by Anthony Ordonez. Some more solid Canyon defense. Piper though in the takeaway. Two attackers in the 18. Canyon rushes it back. Ordonez looking to clear. Throw in coming and for the Cougars. Nearly 10 minutes gone by in the second half. Still a 1-0 Cougar advantage. Again, Canyon 4-2 in those one goal games. Piper 3-1. Game decided by one goal, that lone loss, again, the last, January 14th against Harlandale. And here we are now on March 3rd. Just two losses all season for Piper. Harlandale and El Paso Franklin, that's been it. One nil loss to Harlandale, four nil to Franklin. Off the scoreboard so far tonight. Handling the free kick. Sawyer Parks. Parks towards the 18. And into the gut again of the Canyon keeper, Nico Sellers. And you saw the attacker, Jack Thatcher, was kind of selling out, looking for a header. Couldn't make contact. Fender goes down for Piper. Who can the Cougars the other way? Pass into the 18. Good bicycle pass attempt there, but offline looking for Logan Gage. A good athletic move by Jamie Perales, but offline. And a goal kick here for Piper. Entering the night, the Warriors, a slim two-point lead in the standings for first place over Smithson Valley. Warriors, Rangers, the only two 26-5-8 teams with eight wins. But the Rangers have suffered two losses. The Warriors have not lost a district match, 8-0-2. Oh, On the ropes a bit here. Here comes Canyon, Alejandro Garcia, lost it. Here comes Piper the other way. A lot of back and forth around midfield. Each team fighting for possession. From the Warriors. Maybe a shot coming. It comes. Deflected by Canyon. 
This will lead to a corner for the Warriors. Cougars defense got back. The keeper came out of the six yard box. Nico Sellers denying Jack Thatcher of the equalizer. And our corner for the Warriors heading towards the six. Stays in the 18. The cross deflected. Now a corner coming from the other side of the pitch. Here for Piper. Here's Bennett Schramm, the junior captain. Into a lot of traffic, the 18. No shot for the Warriors on that corner. Still 1-0. Cougars on top when the whistle blows for a free kick for Canyon. Christian Hockley's 35th minute goal, the only scoring so far tonight. Very physical game. Seen players from both teams get fired up at times as well. Officials have had to step in and kind of settle things down. Comes Canyon. And this will be a free kick going the other way for the Warriors with 25 minutes of change. Again, the goal for the Warriors is to get closer to a district title as the Cougars make a sub. They bring Hector Morales back in for Danny Arvalo. The Cougars are trying to get closer and closer to wrapping up a playoff berth. Three point lead over fifth place Kerbal Tiny coming in. And a team playing very well at a critical time of year, and this foul going against Alejandro Garcia, against Canyon. Another free kick here for Piper. Very rare in the Rob Rush tenure, the Cougars have missed the postseason just four times in his first 25 years. Warriors into the 18. Attacker goes down. Call against Canyon, no corner for the Warriors, and a goal kick for the Cougars. Both teams played early in the week as the Warriors make a sub of their own. Emiliano Gutierrez comes off. That's going to bring Eric Ong back in for Piper. Canyon played Bernie Champion to a 2-2 draw on Tuesday. Warriors coming off a 6-1 victory over Veterans Memorial. Right now, 1-0. Cougars on top. There's Thatcher for Piper. Back to his back line. Warriors working it back towards center. Warrior goes down. Play continues. Well, Jackson Schaefer, Cougars have really not let him get involved too much. Good pass, but just a little bit out of the reach of the attacker out in front for Piper. And a 
Instead, the Cougars set up the goalie kick with 22 minutes to go. You get the sense if you're Canyon, going to be tough to shut out Piper. Adding a goal to this lead would be paramount if you're the Cougars right now. Here's Schaefer battling in the corner of the 18. Battling with Reed DeWitt. And now you have Schaefer making sure the ball placement is correct. He thought his possession there for the Warriors, but no, it's a goal kick here for Canyon. Substitution for Canyon. Coming off the pitch, Owen Painter. Looks like Hockley's back in for the Cougars. The goalie scored third of the year. Came back in the first half. Only goal scored tonight, either team. Ong goes down. Whistle blows, free kick here for the Warriors. Setting it up in a hurry. Ball into the 18. Here's a shot, and there's a good save from Nico Sellers. Good diving save to his left. Sellers solid in net all year. Eight saves on Tuesday, several more tonight. Closing in at 140 on the year. And we have now hit the halfway mark of the second half. Warriors coming back this way. Here's a good pass, shot deflected. And I think there was a call for offsides first. And the Cougars are fortunate. That ball deflected off of the keeper sellers. And it likely would have led to a goal there for the Warriors. They had another attacker ready on that deflection. But the offside call. Nineteen minutes to go. Canyon looking to pick up a seventh district win. First five, 26 5 a matches. Three losses for Canyon. Started district play two and three. Now sit at six, three and one. Cougars have not lost in nearly a month. Last defeat came February the 10th. Schaefer for Piper, shields off. Hockley the defender, a quick throw in. Punched out by Canyon. Of the Warriors. Jeremy Sanchez up into the 18. Attacker closing in Cody Smith. Again, could not beat Sellers to the ball. No shot on that trip down for the Warriors. Cougars looking for a takeaway, doesn't come. Gage on the deflection. Warriors back to the back row. And now they'll work it opposite side of the pitch. But it's Schramm, can't maintain possession. And a throw in for the Cougars. A 
as we wind closer to 17 minutes to go. Not much season left after tonight, Canyon. Three matches to go after this evening. Final one at home is next Friday against Seguin. Other two on the road at Smithson Valley and at Wagner. Now those final three opponents, the Cougars have beaten two of them. The loss coming to the Rangers. That ball goes right again into the sure-handed mitts of Sellers. Very good in goal tonight for the Cougars. Warriors in their quest perhaps for a district championship. Also three matches to go. And the whistle comes against Gage. As he knocked down Sanchez from behind. Piper on the road tonight, final two matches of the season, home matches of the year at home. Next week, Bernie Champion, Tuesday, Kerrville Tivy Friday. And again, the Warriors ending the regular season March 14th on the road against Smithson Valley, a game that could decide the 26-5A champion. Looking at two potential playoff bound teams here tonight. Hockley and Perales out in front for Canyon. Perales finds an attacker to his left. Cade Polson. Perales is shot and a dribbler. Easy picked up, easily picked up by Joaquin Sanchez. And now the Warriors are the way with 15 minutes to go. And Gage got tangled up with Thatcher. Piper again going quick on the free kick. Two candy defenders getting back. Denying a passing lane there for the Warriors. Gage still down for Canyon. And just now getting up. Logan Gage, very active tonight, sophomore. Each team now making substitutions. Warriors a deep throw in. Behind the goal. And last touch by the Warriors. Cougars could be 14 minutes away for their seventh shutout of the year, and this would be their most impressive. Tough to keep this Piper offense in check. They have not been shut out since early January. That ball got behind the goalie. Boy, Joaquin Sanchez almost caught in a really bad spot there, a ball that almost sailed over his head. Fortunate, it was to the right of the goal. And it was this close to being 2-0 Canyon. Ordonez back to his keeper, Sellers. Schaefer looming near the canyon keeper. Thatcher to Schaefer. Here's a cross deflected by the Cougars in position or Donez and clears it for Canyon. Calma, no le 
Now on with the centering pass. Shot coming and another nice play made by Sellers. And again to his left. Should the Warriors put in the equalizer in the final 12 minutes. Remember UIL rules. There, are, there is no overtime in the regular season. This match would end in a draw. Here's Thatcher. Good clear out from Canyon. Ball still in the attacking third. That was Reed DeWitt, by the way, sliding stop, getting in Thatcher's lane. Whistle's blowing here, and it looks like DeWitt is slow to get up for the Cougars. Who's that play again? Got tangled up with one of the Warriors, and after popping up initially, going down to the turf as he's talked to do, if you're injured or not feeling well, and you see DeWitt clearly hobbling off to the Canyon sideline. With the stoppage clock now sitting at 11.40 officially inside the stadium. Cougars cleared out. Warriors back towards the 18. Sellers able to beat Schaefer there again. Covering a lot of space in a short amount of time. Some solid athleticism shown by Nico Sellers. Again, the keeper for the Cougars having a really good night. What's been a great week for Sellers. Eight saves on Tuesday. A verbal commitment to TLU. And right now posting a shutout of the top scoring team in District 26-5A. Coming up on 10 minutes to go. Warriors and trying to find a way to get a pass, get a cross into the 18, doesn't come there. Gage for Canyon. Now the ball knocked away by Jeremy Sanchez. And a throw in here for the Warriors. Or no. This is going the other way. Call against Piper, free kick for Canyon. And under 10 minutes left. Cougars trying to hand the Warriors their first loss since January the 14th. Even up this regular season series. Piper again dominant in the first meeting 4-0 at Piper High School last month. And remember, Canyon's one of the Cougars' top players, Baden Arietta, left the game in the first half after the red card. Cougars have been playing without him. One of their top defenders and top offensive players, too. Top point score for Canyon this year. 16 points on the season, five goals, six assists. Not available for a majority of the match. But with Adam Canyon on top, 1-0. Free kick here for the Cougars. Anthony Ordonez, a line drive towards the six, and getting in the way of Gage is Joaquin Sanchez. Here come the Warriors the other way. After good play by their keeper, Sanchez, and then another collision. No whistles, we play on. Gage looking for a shot. 
Gage keeps possession around three defenders. Shot comes, deflected, deflected again. And the last touch coming against Piper. Well, the one-two there by Logan Gage, a sophomore, really impressive. Slow to get up afterwards, trying to battle through three Warrior defenders back in the 18, and still managed to get off a couple of shots. Here's a throw in. Punched away by Sanchez on the deflection, and the shot sails over. Rian Goodwin. Time slowly starting to wind down on Piper. How many scoring chances are left over the final seven minutes? Traffic around midfield. Here comes Canyon the other way. Here's Hockley. A good takeaway. Piper defense got back. Hockley again, the only goal scored tonight. Came to the 35th minute of the first half. And will that goal be enough for Canyon? So far it has been. But still, but still 6.30 to go. Hockley, pass into the 18. Morales, two defenders all around him. And here's a corner now for the Cougars. The goal here is six minutes left. Could put this out of reach. Morales has handled most of the corners tonight for Canyon. Gage was the attacker in all that traffic. Didn't get a touch on it. Here come the Warriors the other way. Here's Schaefer across midfield. Working it back to Thatcher. Attacker to his right. Activity of the 18. Pass got deflected. All that work for the Warriors to get it in there, but no shot. Keeping it though in the attacking third. Here's Cody Smith. He had a striker to his left, Owen Harris, but the pass deflected by Canyon. Again, you've got tempers flaring a little bit. Jackson Schaefer getting caught up with one of the Cougars. I believe that was Owen Painter. And here's that altercation again. Clock right now is stopped. A substitution here. Kate Polson for Canyon. There's one coming off the field for head coach Rob Rush. Officially 4.43 to go. Official was having a conversation with Owen Harris. Piper. Clock restarts. Approaching the final four and a half. Canyon trying to maintain that one nil lead. Into the 18 and here comes Sellers. Out in front of Schaefer again.
Last touch by Canyon. Throw in here for Piper. Trying to keep the ball in the attacking third as long as possible, but Canyon throwing again. Again, you have to wonder how many scoring chances are left if you're the Warriors. A team that has not lost in nearly two months. But Canyon has not lost in close to a month themselves. Two really high quality programs. Playing good soccer tonight, a lot of good solid defense. Scoring chances, both teams only go scored by Hockley in the 35th minute. The Cougars hope that's enough. Figure the Warriors want to find a way to get the ball to Owen Harris or Jackson Schaefer over the final three minutes. Give them a chance to put in the equalizer. Smith. Pass into the 18, but unable to really develop much of a play. Schaefer couldn't maintain, maintain control. Or actually, that was uh, Jack Breidenbaugh. And the Cougars trying to bleed off that final two and a half. Quick free kick for Piper. Here's Thatcher for the Warriors. Just outside the 18, his pass goes. Ball into the 18, Jeremy Sanchez. Good pass, but the shot goes over the bar. And there's under two minutes remaining. Sellers will take every second he can before getting off the goal kick. Approaching the final 90 seconds. Call here against Piper, critical juncture. Here come the Warriors, right to left. Thatcher, the cross got deflected. Ball stays in the 18, here's a shot coming. In position, Nico Sellers. He has been in position all night tonight. On the verge of his seventh shutout of the year. Gave up four to these Warriors when they last met. None passed him tonight. Now to the final 30 seconds. Here's Thatcher, a pass. Cody Smith, a shot deflected by the defender back. Taken away in a tremendous defensive play by Owen Painter. Maybe saving the game. 15 seconds to go. Thatcher, desperate, a pass for Smith, four seconds. Smith's cross deflected, and that'll do it. The Canyon Cougars snap the unbeaten streak for the Warriors' hand. Piper, it's first 26-5A loss, and the Cougars exact revenge. A 1-0 hard-fought victory over the Piper Warriors. Is good for the Cougars, seventh district win, and their tenth win overall this season. And still, no losses on their docket, dating back to February the 10th, as they take down district leading Piper tonight in a thriller from Cougar Stadium. Only goal scored by Christian Hockley in the 35th minute of the first half. With the win, the Cougars improved to 10 7 and 2 in the year, more importantly, 7-3-1 and one in 26-5A play. The Warriors suffer just their third loss. They're now 17-3-3 three and, three, and now 8-1-2 in the 26-5A district. Well, that's going to wrap up our coverage here tonight. On behalf of our entire WIC Productions crew and the Cougars Network, 
I'm Brian Freeman saying good night from Cougar Stadium. Final score, Canyon 1, Piper 0.